Good evening and welcome to InfoWars Nightly News on this April 20, 2012 edition. I'm your host, Paul Joseph Watson. Tonight on the InfoWars Nightly News, our story on mandatory black boxes and cars is making waves in the mainstream media. Paul Joseph Watson covers this and he shows you the law where by 2015, every car in America will have a black box that will track and trace you. Plus, 29 ways the government is now wasting your money. Included in that list, studying why chimps throw poop. Also, new insights of CIA involvement in the JFK assassination, like we didn't know that already. And Rob Dew sits down with Stuart Rhodes, head of Oath Keepers, to discuss the NDAA and other ways our freedoms are being taken. All this and more on the InfoWars Nightly News. We take you now to London, England, and Paul Joseph Watson. Okay, folks, let's get straight to the news. First headline tonight, bill allowing IRS to revoke passports described as, quote, Stalinist. The moving ahead for progress in the 21st century act, Map 21, is so crammed full of unconstitutional provisions that even the mainstream media is up in arms with an investor's business daily editorial describing the section that allows the IRS to revoke passports of accused tax delinquents as, quote, Stalinist. And this, of course, is the uh, legislation, or at least one part of it, we'll go on to discuss others later, which empowers the IRS to suspend travel rights of American citizens simply accused uh, of owing 50000 or more dollars in back taxes to the IRS. And you've heard our take on it over the past week or so. This is what Investors Business Daily, a prominent mainstream newspaper, had to say. Quote, it is hard to imagine any law more reminiscent of the Soviet Union that America toppled or its Eastern Bloc slave satellites. That's not me saying that. That's not Alex Jones saying that. That's a typically mainstream middle of the road newspaper saying that. And they go on basically to describe this IRS provision as the uh, biggest threat to mobility rights since the domination of Eastern Europe by the Communist Party. Uh, and, and the Berlin Wall. And it's basically, they say, a recreation of Stalin's internal passport system whereby Soviet comrades weren't allowed to leave their area of residence without permission from the government. And this is what's being drafted into law under this new bill if it gets past the House. Quote, there remain few things more prized than American citizenship, yet now our ever-expanding leviathan of a government is forcing Americans abroad out, and it might soon build its own Berlin Wall, restricting our freedom of world travel, as Reagan put it, even when there is no conviction from a court, states the editorial. And they make the connection, of course, that the recent news that Americans in record numbers are renouncing their citizenship for this exact reason. The feds prying into their financial affairs and this ties into our next story which is about the same bill forbes writer scoffs at infowars freak out on mandatory black boxes uh, and so as you've read we reported this week on the mandatory event data recorders that are also in this map 21 legislation that includes the irs um, empowerment to revoke passports and in subsequent articles on the matter, we explored the fact that we know these black boxes are already in most new vehicles, aside from a few manufacturers. I mean, Alex Jones has been talking about this since the 1990s. The point is they're trying to make them mandatory now uh, because this is how they're going to implement the carbon tax by the mile system, uh, which you know the Obama administration has been pushing for for years. This is how they will generate the automatic uh, speeding fines and charge it directly to your bank account. You know, fines for not wearing your seatbelt, um, insurance, insurance premiums going up based on these fines. This is all going to be recorded by this black box. That's the point of it. Total invasion of privacy. But this trendy at Forbes magazine called Kashmir Hill, this so-called privacy expert, who if you read a blog actually couldn't care less for privacy, uh, she comes out with this snivelling piece. Hate to break it to you, but your car likely has a black box spying on you already. Which we already knew the fact. 
But she basically accuses us of, you know, freaking out and then says unbelievably that Map 21 is, quote, good for privacy. That's right. Good for privacy, according to this Forbes writer. I mean, it empowers the IRS to share your intimate financial information with the TSA and U U.S. immigration authorities. Um, it it implements this mandatory black box to track where you go, how far you drive, imposes fines and penalties if you deactivate it. And uh, it also lays the groundwork, as I also covered, for this vehicle to infrastructure communication system, uh, which is basically a bug implanted in your car. It works or will work with these IntelliStreets light poles that have got computer systems that broadcast two-way information. Um, they've also been slated to be used to listen to conversations. So all this is going to be hooked into this uh, black box tracker as well as the vehicle to infrastructure communication systems. But according to this trendy at Forbes, it's good for privacy. The bill is good for privacy, even though it destroys privacy. So I guess uh, that's why CIA Chief David Petraeus recently bragged that the government wouldn't have to bother implanting a bug in your house or your car because the people were doing it to themselves through this internet of things uh, of which your car will become a part once this bill gets through. So again, Forbes writer Kashmir Hill says it's good for privacy when it destroys your privacy. I mean, it's obvious she hasn't even read the bill. She doesn't even mention IRS revoking passports or the two-way bug implants. Um, but to their credit, um, some other journalists and columnists in the mainstream media are giving this subject its proper dues, which we'll now explore. Meet the bill that wants to put plain like black boxes in our cars. This is Megan Garger out of The Atlantic. Infowars Paul Joseph Watson reading through section 31406 of the Moving Ahead for Progress in the 21st Century Act. MAP 21 bill that's currently making its way through Congress made a nice catch. The bill calls for, quote, mandatory event data recorders to be installed in all new vehicles starting in the year 2015. So, you know, it's nice to be given credit by some journalists, and they're actually recognizing the threat that this bill poses to privacy. Um, after our article on Wednesday, it was also mentioned in the Business Insider, and now it seems that this black box tracking system is starting to get more and more attention uh, so hopefully the resistance to this bill uh, will begin to build to a crescendo because at the moment it's going to sail through the house with barely a whimper of process so the fact that it's getting more and more attention is a good thing is a good thing uh, for the purposes of trying to stop it from getting passed moving on spy drones over america lawmakers demand answers on privacy safeguards by steve watson a bipartisan pair of congressmen joined forces Thursday to put important questions to the Federal Aviation Administration regarding the agency's plans to open up American skies to thousands of surveillance drones. They've also actually now, um, after a threat of lawsuit, published this uh, map which shows you which states have given permission um, for these surveillance drones to be used in. Hawaii has barred it, and there are also a handful of other U.S. states that have prevented uh, permission, uh, refused to grant permission for these surveillance drones to be flown in those particular states. So basically, these congressmen have written a letter to the FAA asking how this relates to privacy, how it's going to violate people's privacy. But, you know, if, I guess if we listen to the trendies over at Forbes, the same people who say, uh, Bill Gates is a hero and drones used to hunt insurgents in Afghanistan are, you know, good for privacy, I guess. Then I suppose that the mass use of drones in law enforcement is good for privacy. I mean, <laughs> that's the new trendy double think. Everything that destroys privacy is in fact good for privacy. That's what the trendies say over at Forbes. Moving on, climate alarmist calls for burning down skeptics' homes. And this is actually featured over the, uh, the Drudge Report today as one of their top headlines. And once again, uh, eco-fascism raises its ugly head. And this is Steve Zwick writing for, you guessed it, Forbes magazine once again. Destroying privacy is good for privacy. Uh, and basically he says, if you dare to challenge the brainwashing on climate change, then your house should be allowed to burn to the ground. 
quote, we know who the active denialists are, not the people who buy the lies, mind you, but the people who create the lies. Let's start keeping track of them now. And when the famines come, let's make them pay. Let's let their houses burn. Let's swap their safe land for submerged islands. Let's force them to bear the cost of rising food prices. Right, Zwick, adding they broke the climate. Why should the rest of us have to pay for it? So again, the alarmists have lost the debate. The polls show belief in man-made global warming is plummeting. And the alarmists have resorted to using threats and intellectual coercion uh, because the pseudoscience behind their fictional control freak agenda is collapsing. You know, we had the article last week, um, Arctic sea ice expanding, polar bears thriving, emperor penguins thriving, Himalaya, Himalayan glaciers expanding, you know, coldest April in Britain for 100 years. So, but our houses need to burn for simply pointing that information out, apparently, according to Zwick. Uh, so I just say, keep them coming. I mean, they're only discrediting themselves in the public arena with each successive temper tantrum that these climate alarmists have. And, you know, this is by no means the worst of it. People have called for putting skeptics up on Nuremberg war crimes trials, treating them for mental disorders, labeling them as racists. Uh, we had the 1010 Global organization with its satire ad showing kids who refused to lower their carbon footprints being blown up in an explosion of blood and guts. I mean, there was an article today out of the Telegraph where this green Nazi control freak actually tried to say that climate change was a feminist issue. So again, anything, everything to shift it away from the fact that, you know, the, the case is collapsing. That's why they refuse to debate the skeptics anymore. They just call for them to be strung up, put on trial, killed, houses burned down. Um, and the fact is, these people don't care about real environmental problems. They're not concerned about the horrors that Monsanto are inflicting upon the planet. Uh, the eugenicists, they're the ones that are set to make all the power and money off the global carbon tax. Um, and they're pushing a dogma that's anti-human. It seeks to demolish the very underpinnings of what makes a free and prosperous society. And they want to replace it with their scientific dictatorship planned opolist nightmare which is why they're coming out with all these threats and intimidation that we need to shut up, otherwise we're going to be targeted as personally responsible uh, when their whole scientific technocracy comes into being. Next story on InfoWars Nightly News. Chimps throwing poop and 29 other mind-blowing ways the government is wasting your money. <laughs> and a lot of this, funnily enough, is actually the same kind of scientist that milk the gravy train of global warming that gives them all these millions of dollars in federal government grant money. So this article at uh, Economic Collapse blog basically just lists some of the uh, mind-blowingly pointless things that the federal government is funding to the tune of hundreds of thousands, and in some cases millions of dollars, while the people are told, you know, they must labor under poverty and austerity. And here's just a few of them. You can read the full list at the original article. In 2011, the National Institutes of Health spent $592,000 on a study that sought to figure out once and for all why chimpanzees throw poop. Because obviously that's very important to understand. Uh, you know, food stamp usage is at record levels, the debt's out of all control, uh, but they're spending nearly $600,000 on figuring out why chimps throw poo at each other. Okay, that's great. Here's another one. National Institutes of Health, again, spent more than $5 million on a website called Sex Pulse that's targeted at men who use internet to seek sex with men. Again, uh, your tax dollars at work. Federal government is spending millions of dollars to train Asian call center workers, outsourcing your jobs in the process. Uh, the federal government spent $175,000 to determine if cocaine makes Japanese quail engage in sexually risky behavior. So that's obviously, you know, I guess it's a national security issue or something. Uh, $600,000 spent or given to researchers at Columbia University by the federal government to study how heterosexuals use the internet to find love. Again, 
that's worth six hundred thousand dollars of your money any day they also gave three million dollars to researchers at the university of california at irvine to fund their research into video games such as world of warcraft another worthy cause national institutes of health four hundred thousand dollars to, to study why gay men in argentina engage in risky sexual behavior when they're drunk maybe we should you know spend another half a million on seeing if that's connected to the the japanese quails who also engage in sexually risky behavior god knows but <laughs> that's just a few of them there's literally there's about 30 different ones and you can go to the original article and read about it but it's just an illustration of out of control government spending on all kinds of ridiculous crap while while we're being told that we've got to pay for the bailouts and everything else moving on mary pinchot meyer jfk mistress assassinated by cia new book says this is out of the huffington post conspiracy theorists who question president john f kennedy's assassination in 1963 have over the years become obsessed with another murder on October 12, 1964, socialite and artist Mary Pinchot Meyer, a longtime Kennedy mistress, was shot execution style in broad daylight while walking along the Georgetown Canal towpath. Within hours, police charged day laborer Ray Crump Jr. with murder. They never found the gun, however, and a jury acquitted Crump after an eyewitness described the killer as much bigger than, than the diminutive defendant. In the ensuing years, the case has become one of Washington's most infamous unresolved murder cases. And there's a new book coming out about this. Obviously, no time to delve into such a gargantuan subject now. But um, Jim Mars, in his book, actually lists over 100 people who died in mysterious circumstances, mainly accidents or suicides, uh, who were eyewitnesses to the JFK assassination. Um, Earlier this month, we had the Secret Service agent come out and said that uh, Jackie Kennedy's last words were, quote, oh, Jack, what have they done? Obviously, the word they being suggestive of a wider plot. Uh, you know, in the past, we've had Madeleine Duncan Brown, LBJ's mistress, uh, who gave an interview saying basically LBJ conspired the night before to have JFK killed. The quote, according to her, those SOBs will never embarrass me again. That's what LBJ said about the Kennedys the night before the assassination. Uh, again, just a baseless conspiracy theory, as much of the JFK material is still treated by the establishment. Um, Bar McClellan, the, the father of the former White House press secretary, he came out and said that it was an LBJ plot. Uh, of course, E. Howard Hunt, uh, who came on... Uh, we had his son come on with the revelations on the Alex Jones show a few years ago about uh, how he was a bench warmer in the plot to kill JFK, and he also implicated LBJ in the plot. Then, of course, we got the famous wink from Congressman Albert Thomas that he gave to LBJ as Johnson was being sworn in as you know JFK's replacement when he became president after his death. So the evidence is overwhelming. It would take a 2,000-word book to, out, to lay it out, but obviously um, the polls show the vast majority of Americans disbelieve the official conspiracy theory about JFK, uh, but the establishment still uses this uh, grassy knoll cliche uh, to debunk anyone who attempts to challenge the establishment orthodoxy on any modern event. So, new book coming out with new revelations about JFK, so we'll await that one. Final story tonight on InfoWars Nightly News. Roundup herbicide linked to Parkinson's related brain damage from uh, greenmedinfo.com. Alarming new research published in the journal Neurotoxicology and Teratology supports the emerging connection between glyphosate, the active ingredient in Roundup herbicide, and neurodegenerative conditions such as Parkinson's disease and Parkinsonian disorders. And basically, this article lists different modes of toxicity that this Monsanto-produced herbicide, Roundup, has been linked with. Um, and of course, this is the product that was previously labeled by, by Monsanto, safe as table salt. So you can sprinkle it on your chips and eat it. It's that safe. But of course, the studies have shown that it's the primary cause of colony collapse disorder, this mass die-off of bees, 
uh, as well as the die-offs of other insects, including butterflies. So, you know, we know that Monsanto recently bought out one of the companies responsible for researching colony collapse disorder. That's right. They actually bought the group that was studying why the bees were dying. <laughs> it's, I mean, why doesn't Monsanto just buy up all the organizations that are looking into the causes of Parkinson's disease? It's like some kind of bizarre Borg assimilation process. You know, you, you have an organization that links Monsanto with uh, mass die-offs of bees, neurological disorders, and Monsanto just says, right, we're just going to buy up the company and bury the data. You will be assimilated into the Monsanto Borg. Unfortunately for, unfortunately for them, though, um, they can't assimilate the thousands of activists, committed uh, campaigners who have successfully evicted Monsanto out of several uh, European and South American countries. So while Monsanto will continue uh, to try and buy up anyone who points out that they're responsible for killing off bees, butterflies, and innumerable other insects, as well as links to neurological uh, diseases such as Parkinson's, uh, the war against their deadly GMO poison continues. And if you're looking to find out more information on Monsanto's war on the environment and family farms, I encourage you to check out the documentary uh, Farmageddon, The Unseen War on American Family Farms, which is available at the InfoWars store today. Check it out. Get your 15-day free trial at PrisonPlanet.tv. Of course, you may be watching this on YouTube, but it's streamed first exclusively at PrisonPlanet.tv, uh, along with all the InfoWars Nightly News archives, Alex Jones Show archives, special speeches, interviews, just a ton of multimedia content, and it, of course, supports what we're doing. We wouldn't be able to do this without your support, so please subscribe at PrisonPlanet.tv. Coming up after the break, Rob Dew sits down for an interview with uh, Stuart Rhodes to talk about the uh, widening resistance against the National Defense Authorization Act with uh, anti-NDAA resolutions in Virginia and Arizona. So stay tuned for that interview. What will become the largest domestic spying operation in history, the National Security Agency, or NSA, is building a top-secret facility just south of Salt Lake City, Utah. The Utah Data Center, which is currently under construction at the southern end of Camp Williams, a Utah National Guard base, is slated to be a one million square foot repository of all digital communications in the United States and abroad. As this report will show you, there is a growing connection between the NSA and the LDS Church, also known as the Mormons, connected to the church's long-standing practice of sending missionaries out to foreign countries. Missionaries, who typically serve two-year terms as messengers of their religion, often travel to foreign countries, earn top-secret clearances, and learn language skills at the Missionary Training Center near Brigham Young University in Provo, Utah. A deeper, darker course is also being taught, however, at BYU, one which may involve those who return from their missionary travels spying on American citizens. Well, we look at, uh, we look at the mathematics behind cryptography. Uh, we look at classical encryption, uh, something as easy as a, a substitution cipher or a kind of a cryptogram puzzle. Uh, but then we also look at more modern methods of encryption uh, and, and methods of, of, of sharing data um, that, that use more sophisticated mathematics. Uh, now, the mathematics behind this is, you know, it, it, it's at a level that, that undergraduate students can't understand it uh, with, with, uh, with, with, with just a little bit of math background. In fact, we've taught this to incoming freshmen here at BYU. And here we are, and what's your name, sir? My name is Chris. Chris, and where are you from, Chris? Atlanta, Georgia. Atlanta, Georgia. And are you having a good time here in Nashville, Tennessee? Yes, I am. Awesome. And do you know who Barry Satoro is? No, I do not. You don't know who Barry Satoro is. What would you say if I told you that Barry Satoro is the real name of Barack Obama, 44th President of the United States of America? Uh, I guess I learned something new today. Downtown Nashville to talk to the Johnson Creek Stranglers Band to find out if they know who Barry Satoro is. Excuse me, sir, can I have your name? My name is Joe Sanders. Joe Sanders, and you are? Johnny Outlaw. Johnny Outlaw, and you are? 
Mofer Pickens. Mofer Pickens. And do you all know who Barry Satoro is? No. I don't know who Barry Satoro is. This is Flashpoint Radio, and I am your host, Jay Z. It is Monday, April the 16th, 2012. Uh, and yes, I am going to court along with my eight plus month pregnant wife to uh, Maplewood, where we used to live, where I went to court last time, because in no animal license, Phil Gold, building inspector Phil Gold, cited me. Then, I suppose Phil Gold, being a simple business ins a building inspector, could not actually write a citation, um, got Officer J.G. Williams to write an actual uniform citation. Um, J.G. Williams states under, or, or uh, this ticket says, as all tickets, I knowing that false statements on this form are punishable by law state that I have probable cause to believe that we have cats on the premises. This gentleman has never been in my apartment. This gentleman has never seen any cats. He is claiming he did on March 14th. We will see at court tonight. Thank you so much, Maplewood, for your simple tyranny that I will defeat so easily with the truth and my pocket constitution. Well, oh, look at the sweet little old man. Why, he could be just about anyone's grandfather. But who is he? Is he multi billionaire businessman philanthropist, the Oracle of Omaha? Or, as he has also been referred to, the scumbag Warren Buffett, ice cream demon. You decide. Hi there, and welcome back to the Real Story News Underground Studios. It is Tuesday, April 17th, 2012, and I'm Douglas Piper reporting for Infowars.com. Now this evening I'm going to talk about Warren Buffett, um... Uh, First off, I'll, uh, I'll talk briefly about the Buffett Rule, the proposed new tax law that Obama is pushing for. Uh, then I'm going to move on to a whole separate side of uh, Warren Buffett, the cute little old grandfatherly man, um, a more disturbing side, so stick around for that. Coming up later in the segment, a cryptologist, a government code breaker who says that he knew about 9-11 before it happened and even tried to warn his bosses. But first, the news. Over the years, it has been one thing after the next with our food supply. GMOs, high fructose corn syrup, MSG, aspartame, and food coloring. It's leading consumers to wonder, what next? By now you're familiar with the term pink slime. The mixture of eyeballs, tendons, muscles, and probably even some blood to give it that nice pink color. That stuff that ended up on our plates. Now when this story broke, I thought it was rather suspicious. I wanted to know what took them 50 years to break the story and why now? Well, as we see in news today, beef manufacturers are raising the price of their food. Just another food spike increase that we've seen lately, and there's definitely more to come. Now, all of this coming on the coattails of the news that uh, corporations such as Pepsi have actually been using fetal cells of aborted babies and using this for testing and these products in their foods. This is outrageous. This is Chris Gordon reporting for InfoWars San Francisco because there's a war on for your mind, an information war that Hillary admits they are losing. We are in an information war and we are losing that war. The game of global domination that used to be played by brute force is now candid and bureaucratic to the point where there's actually a tangible document outlining its strategy. It's called by the UN Agenda 21 because it is the agenda for the 21st century. And it sets to literally reconstruct all of life as we know it. Among those bringing light to this subject is Rosa Corey, who's not your typical California gay pro-choice feminist liberal Democrat. Her speeches are winning over Tea Party members 
and stirring up city planning meetings. After discovering this plan while working with landowners responding to eminent domain, she's decided to retire early in her career just to speak out with the following such warnings. Agenda 21 is a plan to inventory and control all resources, human and natural, and all means of production in the world. And this is the process that is happening right now in every single city, town, community, in the entire world. Hi everyone, this is uh, Sonia up in Montreal reporting for Infowars.com and I'd like to talk to you about GMOs. Just a few years ago most people had no idea what GMOs even were but now uh, as their devastating effects on humans and the environment are coming to light, GMOs are getting more and more widespread attention. Lately Monsanto has been getting sued by individuals and in class action lawsuits States like Vermont are trying to have the right to label GMO food, even though Monsanto is threatening to sue them. Uh, countries such as uh, some in Europe have been trying very hard to keep GMOs banned. And recipients of U.S. food aid have been burning GMO seeds. And yet, despite all this damning evidence coming out against GMOs, we're repeatedly being told that they're safe by groups such as the Council for Biotechnology Information. Harvard development expert says biotech crops are a solution for food and environmental challenges. Well, I guess if the challenge is to destroy the food supply and the environment, then yeah, GMOs are the perfect solution. That from a strategic perspective, we cannot fight a war against Iran with Syria to our back. Syria is a very strong military. They are supplied and equipped with the latest in Russian military technology. I'm talking S-300 surface-to-air missiles and Iskander or Alexander ballistic missiles capable of carrying and deploying chemical weapons. Whether they have them or not, who knows, but they have the capabilities the important factor, they can strike anywhere in the region. So if we were to, and they are open allies of the Iranians and the Russians, so if we were to strike at Iran, we would be leaving a very strong enemy to our back, not only to mention that they also support, arm, and help equip and train Hezbollah. So we would be fighting a three-fronted war, which even as egotistical and arrogant as some of our military and civilian leaders may be, it is fundamentally impossible to fight a three-fronted war against three relatively strong armies with the small forces that both we and the Israelis have. So why is the enterprise now, to go back around, why is the enterprise in the Mediterranean? I think the American people need to prepare themselves for a Gulf of Tonkin-like scenario. This is the last deployment of the USS Enterprise. And it is very important that it's being deployed to the coast of Syria and not to the Persian Gulf. I believe that what we are about to witness is a incident similar to the Gulf of Tonkin or what was, what was meant to happen to the USS Liberty, but fortunately or unfortunately for the Israelis, the crew of the USS Liberty survived. I'm announcing our biggest contest ever. And we're looking for people who love freedom and who want to be all in in the resistance to tyrants. So you say you want to fight the new world order. Why, if you were on the radio, if you were Alex Jones, you'd really kick some globalist ass. Well, here's your chance. We're hiring not one, but two new reporters whose reports are going to be on the radio whose reports are going to be on the nightly news, who will even anchor the show. If you're ready, here's your chance to step into my shoes, and I hope you surpass what I've done. Two winners, $10,000 in prizes, and a shot to be a reporter inside the InfoWars.com command center. We're looking to hire one male reporter and one female reporter. And when you win, you win $5,000. Your video gets seen by hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people on YouTube. And you get put into the very front of the running to be hired as a reporter slash anchor right here in our operation. Do you have what it takes to be the next Info Warrior? The rules are posted below me here and at InfoWars.com. This is a big deal. 
you know, the globalists are expanding their global empire. But at the same time, the people are waking up all over the world. We've expanded our operations in the last year. We've added the nightly news five nights a week. We're making more special reports. We're reaching 15 million people every week. In a year, I want that to be 30 million. This is your chance to join the team. I want to see what you can do. But a big hint is this. Can your news piece make the news? Does it get people's attention? Does it educate people? Does it open minds? That's more important than being beautiful or speaking with perfect eloquence as an orator. All of that is important. But we're looking for people that have that magic spark, that fire of liberty in their heart, because I want you to join our team. I want to give you a launch pad so you can really take off and engage the globalist. And if this works, we'll have contests all the time and we'll continue to build this operation. I'm involved in a talent search, looking for people who have the fires of liberty burning in their hearts and their minds. You've got until April 30th to complete your news report and then we'll announce the winners one week later. Are you gonna join the info war? Do you have what it takes? It's up to you. All serious entries will be posted on InfoWars.com. So everybody wins. You're getting the message of liberty out, and that's what really matters. But in the final equation, it's not about showing Alex Jones what you got. It's about showing the world and the globalist that no army can stop an idea whose time has come. Join me in the Info War. So you say you want to fight the info war. You say you want to go head up against the new world order. You can do a better job than Alex Jones. I know you can. And here's your chance to prove your mettle. enjoy it when the globalists try to poison us and uh, well we resist them via a free market system hello my fellow info warriors alex jones here introducing you to the pro pure family of gravity fed filters now you know that the globalists are filling our water with radioactive isotopes fluoride lead mercury arsenic and one of the few systems that can efficiently and economically remove or reduce down to non-detectable levels these poisons are gravity-fed filters and ProPure is the top of the line their filters are impregnated with silver a natural antibiotic on top of that they're bigger so they filter faster you don't have to prime these the first time you use them it's amazing. Go to InfoWars.com and click on the shopping cart link uh, to see the entire family of these babies. Now, the fluoride they add to our water is so tiny that most filters can't cut it out. But ProPure has their system that will, again, reduce it to non-detectable levels, almost get all of it out of there. That's also available. And if you look at the different systems they offer, the Pro Pure Big Brush Finish is on a stand, so it's easier on a table or at your restaurant or wherever you have it to go up with a glass or a mug and fill it up. Then there's this big baby right here, the Pro Pure King Large version. Got a lot of different options that come with it. Also, they have the Pro Pure Big, probably one of the best values out there. And of course, it's burnished stainless steel. And then what I use on my RV, something that's great for your hunting cabin or the back porch is the Pro Pure Traveler. Small and portable, but packs a huge punch, cleans out all that garbage. They also have a glass sight spigot, so you don't have to take the top off and look in the bottom area to see how much water. You can see how fast it's filtering with this optional uh, system. The globalist obviously are hitting us through our water. It's time to take control of our lives. It's time to not give our children and families these poisons. And these systems cut it down to non-detectable levels across the board. ProPure is the name. I only promote what I believe in. 
and I use ProPure in my home and my office. And I recommend that you check out the information on ProPure at InfoWars.com. We already have the lowest price at InfoWars.com on the ProPure Gravity Filter System. But when you add in the 10% off when InfoWarriors use the product code WATER at InfoWars.com, nobody can top it. So again, it's a win-win-win. Stop drinking the poison water, uh, checkmate the globalists when it comes to your health, and support InfoWars.com and the work we're doing here. You know, many revolutionaries rob banks and things and kidnap people for funds. We promote in the free market the products we use that are about preparedness. That's how we fund this revolution against the New World Order in our move to restore our constitutional republic and a spirit of 1776 worldwide. Check it out at InfoWars.com. Pro Pure, top of the line, number one, most powerful and effective and economical gravity fed water system in the world. Pro Pure, available, discounted at InfoWars.com. Don't forget product code WATER to save 10%. It's the latest generation, years in development. Pro Pure is the name. Welcome back to InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Rob Dews, sitting over here in Austin, Texas, thanks to Paul Joseph Watson for covering the news and all the, the issues important to today. We really appreciate his work out there in England with uh, PrisonPlanet.com and his brother Steve Watson, tirelessly working and giving us stuff to cover by the time we get in the office in the morning. It's a real pleasure working with those guys. I uh, hope you enjoyed watching those segments of the uh, people who've entered the reporter contest. If you're interested, you can go to infowars.com forward slash reporter dash contest and you can look at all the details you have till April 30th to get your entry in. We're looking for male, one female, one male winner. I think you each win $5,000. But even if you don't win, people are going to see your reports. We're putting them up on our website. We're linking to them. Lots of other people around the world are seeing them. And we're creating little uh, internet stars out there. So keep up the good work. You guys are doing great. I love seeing the multiple entries, even though it's a bit of a headache to go through every one. I really do appreciate what everybody's doing. Um, I was watching one about a guy who's in, uh, he's having to deal with some cat issues and cat tags. But he's taking them to court, and he's putting it out there so other people can see what he's doing. And, uh, and you know, sharing information, that's what it's all about with the internet. Our guest today, Stuart Rhodes of Oath Keepers. He's the founder of Oath Keepers. I met him a couple years ago up in Massachusetts where they were um, having the, what was this, Concord and uh, Stuart, where were we at then? We were, we were April 19th, 2009 at Lexington Green. Lexington Green. Um, where the first shots were fired in the American Revolution. That's it. Thank you for that, Stuart. Uh, so we met him and a bunch of other Oath Keepers there. It was a great ceremony that we had on the day of the anniversary of the shot heard around the world. I went over to Concord Bridge, watched the reenactment there. It was pretty interesting stuff, but uh, we had to deal with some local issues there. It was very interesting. But anyway, I turned to my friend, Stuart Rhodes. How are you doing, Stuart? Doing fine. And speaking of April 19th, yesterday was, was April 19th. And oddly enough, or no surprise, um, Obama and the rest of the federal government made no mention whatsoever of a April 19th, 1775, Concord and Lexington, but instead you had officials, including uh, Timothy Geithner, um, going and holding official ceremonies to, to commemorate the Holocaust Remembrance Day, which is fine. That's also April 19th. That's the anniversary of the ghetto uprising where the Jews killed some of the Nazi bastards. Mm -hmm. They're trying to murder them, right? Um, but but they you know they'll celebrate that, but they will not say a thing about April 1975, Concord and Lexington. They want to wipe it out of our history. Well, they so don't want to give. Sure we don't do that. They don't want to give real patriots any press. You know that would that would then uh, well, that validate the fights of, 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 of a revolution against your own government. Sure, yeah, that's what we were doing back then. They were rebelling against their own government, against the crown. So no government wants to remind the, their citizenry about, about that history. And what were they doing? What were they fighting? They were coming to take their guns. The British troops were coming to take their guns, and the people rose up and said, no, not today. You're not going to do it to us. Exactly. And they were also coming to, to black bag and enemy combatant, you know, detain yeah. um, John Adams, and, or I mean Sam Adams, and, and also um, Hancock. Yeah. So they're coming for the for the patriot leaders. They're going to take them off to a, a uh, you know a navy ship and, and 
and take them across the seas and tried in England. So the same kind of nonsense we're facing now with the NDAA. That's what sparked the American Revolution. Same nonsense, different day. I want to go to this article that I sent you and that we covered a few days ago, um, The Facade of Federal Justice. This is sent to us by one of our listeners up in Montana. And uh, it talks about a, a Butte, Montana City Judge, Steve Cambich, who was convicted of bribery in federal court. He receives a $5,000 fine, which was less than the total of his bribes, and five years of probation. And then they, they contrast this with the guy, Chris Lindsay, who's facing 690 years to 25 life, consecutive life sentences, and basically for owning firearms and providing medical marijuana to people. What is going on, Stuart? Well, this is an example of why the justice system should be called the injustice system. I mean, first of all, this is this is a this is a a raid on the medical marijuana providers after Eric Holder promised and Pinky promised that they would not use federal laws to raid medical marijuana providers. And these are medical marijuana providers who were operating under state law, totally legal in Montana. It had been passed by a resolution of the people the referendum of the people of Montana who wanted medical marijuana. And so they were operating, you know, both with the promise that the feds wouldn't come get them and under under protection, they thought, of state law being completely legal. And yet the feds came in and raided them and all the local, unfortunately, all the local uh, police and sheriff's departments complied and participated and assisted in these unconstitutional raids. You know, a direct violation of the idea of state sovereignty and the separation of powers between the federal government and the states. And this is how, this is where we are because of the growth of the Commerce Clause powers through judicial fiat, increasing the power of, of Congress to now they can regulate almost anything, absolutely anything. I can't think of one thing they can't regulate. And so they come in, and even though you pass something in your state that legalizes whatever it might be, gun possession, marijuana possession, whatever, the feds claim that they can go ahead and criminalize it at the federal level and come slap slap you with charges. And in this case, what they did is they, they, they tacked on all these firearms charges because, hey, guess what? People in Montana have guns, and they have a lot of guns. I, I can't believe that. Guns. They have yeah, guns in Montana? I know. Outrageous, isn't it? Wow. But once, you, once you're accused of committing a crime, then they say, well, any gun that is on the premises is a gun that's possessed in furtherance of a crime, and they tack on additional sentences. And that's why he's facing 25 consecutive life years um, plus 85 years. You know, he's, he's facing like 380 years in, in, in prison or 25 consecutive life years. It's an absurdity. Mm -hmm. And you can thank the NRA for this kind of nonsense. Exactly. It's always going on about we got to make sure that we enforce all the drug, all the all the gun laws that are in there to to the hilt, and make sure that any any criminal who uses a gun in the crime gets gets punished with minimum sentences. And that's what the NRA has done. So that means as any of you or me. All of us, if we're accused of anything by the feds and we happen to be gun owners, they're going to tack on a whole bunch of additional charges. And what, why do they do this? They're threatening this guy with 25 consecutive life sentences. What do you think he's going to do? Sure. He's going to go to trial or they're going to coerce him into a freaking plea bargain? So they threaten you with these outrageous sentences to get you to go to a plea bargain, and it's all based on your gun possession. So this is an example of how the, the stupidity of conservatives, drug war obsessed conservatives, and law and order obsessed conservatives has they they've put in place this huge hammer that can be used against any of us to coerce us into a confession, to coerce us into a plea bargain. What I think is ridiculous with this conservative mindset is that there if they if this guy takes jail time we're then taking a productive member of society out of the workplace, putting him in this controlled uh, prison environment, this in prison industrial complex where we have to feed him, clothe him, give him medical care. And this guy didn't do anything except provide people with medicine. I mean, I really can't understand it. And this, you know, being 420, this is like the smoker's holiday, which is one of the reasons why I pulled this story out, um, you know. And to me, you know, in, our, in my lifetime, I feel... I will have failed if we don't get rid of drug prohibition, especially marijuana. I mean, if, if we can't have people getting access to medicine, people using it recreationally, people growing it for fuel, for clothing, for 
most of the basic needs can be met with this plant. If we don't have that by the time I'm dead, I'm, I'm going to feel like a complete failure, honestly, because it's a plant, and it's a useful plant, and we should be using it and growing it. And under our Constitution, as originally designed by the founders, you would be able to do so, as Montanans did at the state level. Right. The feds have no jurisdiction. They've got no, no authority, no power under the Constitution to regulate anything that's done inside the state. If it's not for interstate commerce, if it's just for your own use inside your own state, they have no jurisdiction over it, but yet they claim jurisdiction over it. Well, yeah, this is the problem is that under, under the founders' original design for our constitutional republic, the, the federal government has no jurisdiction, has no power whatsoever to even regulate marijuana or any other drug or anything else done inside the states. As Madison said in, in the Federalist Papers, the powers of the new government will be concerned primarily with foreign affairs and, and, and external affairs and commerce, war, foreign policy, things like that, leaving the states to regulate the daily lives of the people. And so we're supposed to be little workshops of liberty in each state, laboratories of liberty to, to set our own course. And the people of Montana did that. They passed a resolution um, by the voters, even going around the state legislature, directly from the voters saying, we want medical marijuana. That's legal in Montana. That should be the end of the story. But the federal courts have interpreted the commerce powers to being that Congress can make any law it wants to about anything it wants to. And then you thank the drug lawyers for that. You have the race case where the woman who's growing marijuana in her own backyard, not for sale, not for interstate commerce, just for her own personal use because she was a separate cancer. And they rule because Scalia doesn't like drugs. He sided with the liberals on the court who like federal power. And they ruled the majority decision that Congress can regulate even her growing of a plant in her own backyard, not for sale, because they said that her growing that plant impacts the market of, a, of the legal market for marijuana, the black market for marijuana. It's absolutely absurd. Wow. And so because of the drug warriors, you now have a wide open police power, the power to make laws about anything in Congress. This is what you get. And it directly impacts on gun rights. You have the new Montana gun bill that was passed by the legislature and signed by the governor, signed by Governor Sports or a Democrat. Um, and yet, that's likely to fail in its federal court case because the court will defer back to the race case and say, well, look, if, the, if you can regulate a woman growing a pot plant for her own personal use, not for sale, then surely you can regulate someone manufacturing a firearm in Montana. So that's what's going to happen with that case. So, you know, this is, this is the absurdity of, of, the, of the conservative obsession with the, drug, with the drug war that has led to the destruction of the idea of state sovereignty and the idea of people deciding their own way to live in each state. Yeah, I agree. Uh, the only silver lining I can see to this is right now you have a lot of uh, South American, Central American presidents, former presidents, Vincente Fox just said it, that we need to end the drug war. And it's going to happen it needs to happen sooner rather than later because we're ruining, you know, we're continuing to ruin lives over this needless ferreting around, uh, digging into people's business and what they want to do with their bodies. So, with that. It's something they have with prohibition. And I guess what's kind of funny is that's a good example. Is that back in the 20s, they had to pass a constitutional amendment in order to criminalize alcohol in this country. And then they realized their mistake and they repealed it. Right. How quaint. Nowadays, yeah. that's what they should have to do is pass an amendment. You want to give Congress the power to regulate everything under the sun, then sponsor an amendment and get it passed. Otherwise, go stuff it. Exactly. So, you know, so you're right. Eventually, they'll, but eventually, this country will realize that we're making the same exact mistake as during Prohibition. It's growing the cartels. It's feeding these criminal underground gangs. It's only going to get worse, and it's also growing corruption. I totally agree. I mean, I'm, you're not going to find any argument there. Um, moving on, I get, I get a few emails from people, uh, want to know an update on the case. Um, I haven't said anything about it since we went to Pittsburgh. I made a little video, um, where I went to the spot actually where the incident took place. I shot, uh, some iPhone video and, um, there it is up on screen now. It's right in front of the Cathedral of Learning where the, uh, Pittsburgh police and other police agencies around the, the country came in for this big party to, uh, push around Pitt students after, and this is after they were done running security for the G20. And um, so anyway, Stuart, why don't you give everybody an update on that? Well, the latest is, is that is that they're offering 
they're offering ten thousand dollars as their their way to settlement offer. That's about the best we're going to get as an offer. And, and so you know, this is AIG on the other side. That's the insurance company, so it's no surprise. Yeah. And so you know, it's it's, it's an absurdity as you call. What did you call it earlier? You called it um, shoe money. What was that? Shoe fly money. What'd you call oh, it? Oh yeah, yeah. Shoe fly. Get out of here. Get out of here. Yeah, Here's exactly. some money. Get out of here. Don't stand up for the First Amendment. And that's kind of what, you know, when we were in that meeting, um, you know, that's what I felt like it was the entire time. I felt that it was just, you know, we got to deal with this person because he actually decided to stand up for himself. So let's let's throw him a little bone, get him out of here, and, uh, you know, we can keep getting bailout money until the sun stops shining. And, uh, you know... I totally agree with what you said. You said, let's fight this. This is a fight worth fighting, and it's, it's a First Amendment fight. So, you know, uh, from here, it'll probably be years before this thing is finally done. But um, I, I think it's a fight worth fighting. These, these cops, you know, totally went out of their way to create a situation that was going to breed people coming out and seeing what was going on. It was totally going to breed people telling the cops to go home, it, you know, and by them being there, I think they created the problem. I don't think it, there was a problem before that. Um, there, was, there was some people holding a demonstration in a park that could hold those people. It was only 50 people in the park. They surrounded the park, started threatening them with tear gas, so the people stepped off the park. And then from that point on, you know, you have 30 or 40,000 students in that area, probably even more than that, who all live around that area, start coming out, looking to see what's going on. Cops start beating on their riot shields, and they corner a bunch of people. I happen to be in that group. And, uh, you know, there's a, there's a shot that I put online of, of them letting out a reporter before me. She showed them a press pass. They let her through the line. I walked up right after that with my camera, asking them, you know, hey, I'm press too. Can I get out of here? And uh, first guy, you know, said, you're with the press, and started telling me, you know, I have to leave the area, which I was going to comply with. And, and then someone else showed up and said, no, he's not with the press, and that was it. And then it was 10 hours in chains, being uh, talked down to, looked down upon, being cold, thrown out in the rain. Um, it was 50 degrees that night. I was only in shorts and a T-shirt because I didn't even have time to change. I was covering events the whole day. I was working my butt off that day. You know, that's what I do for a living is cover events. So we'll see how that goes. But uh, I'm, I'm sure I'm glad I have the head of Oath Keepers on my side for this one. Well, you know, it's, it's going to be like a fight. We're up against a big dragon, you know, AAG, and, and they don't care about anything. But the absurd and disgusting thing is that they get to use bailout money from taxpayers to fund the litigation. Yeah. You know? So they'll, they'll, they're fighting us with their own money. Exactly. Defending, defending, from, <laughs> defending themselves from us with our, and we're paying for it. It's, it's totally ridiculous. Defending themselves, defending themselves from the Constitution with, with their own money. Well, <laughs> and I think we're going to have a repeat of this in uh, Chicago. Well, they're already running war games and drills out there now with Black Hawk helicopters flying around the city at low altitudes with guys sticking, you know, sitting out there with machine guns trying to create that presence of, hey, we're in charge here. Get out of the way. We're bringing in world leaders. Don't speak up about it. We're going to have fines. You got to get permits to even stand on the street and say anything. It, it's it's going to be mayhem because I think the people at by this point, you know, Pittsburgh was 09. There's a lot more people who haven't been working, a lot more people who are hungry, and a lot more people who know who the criminals are now. So I think you're going to see, you're going to see something going on in Chicago, and it's not going to be nice. What, what's your take on what's going on in Chicago with this NATO summit? Well, why do they need to have a meeting for NATO in downtown Chicago with all these so-called dignitaries? I mean, what they're really doing is creating a G20 incident. You know, let's still close down the downtown area of Chicago of all places. And let's make sure that we, you know, because of that, we have to have all these heightened security alerts and, and, and searches and cordon and search and, and barricades and, and guys flying around in choppers, hanging from choppers with submachine guns, who are supposed to have nothing to do with this, but, but obviously do. So, you know, so they, they, could have had, they could have had the meeting for NATO in the middle of freaking Kansas someplace, you know, someplace, someplace that's not in the middle of a big city. But no, they, they, they want to have a big show, and they want to have a good excuse to come in there and do the exact same thing they did in G20. So yeah. you're right. This is dog training for the American people. It's, we're we're going to cordon off areas. We're going to search your bags. We're going to do what we want because we say it's for security. And, and when we say it's for security, we can do whatever we want. You know, we can TSA and, you. And we can, letting us know that, hey, there are, there are certain world elites that trump us. 
They're more important than us. They can go in and blockade the whole city, do all of this and all this nonsense because they're somehow superior to the rest of us. And we better get in line and submit to the searches and submit to their, their uh, you know, their free speech zones someplace outside of the area where they're going to be, all that kind of nonsense. It's as though each one of those foreign you know, officials were the president of the United States. They treat them with the same kind of, same kind of care and the same kind of uh, deference. Yeah, it's sick. And now we've got in Houston, uh, Sheila Jackson Lee's partnering up with the DHS, and they're going to put TSA workers in disguises on city buses. I mean, that is just ridiculous beyond a shadow of a doubt. I can't even believe that I'm reading this story in 2012, that we're going to have secret police running around trying to catch people, doing whatever. whatever. I mean, being people. What, people are mad yeah, that the, that the economy is not good? Latent crime. Yeah, I mean, there's no uh, there's no crime even being committed, other unless riding on a bus is a crime now. I mean, did that become a crime in Houston? I don't know. But now we have to have police officers on the buses, and they're not even police officers in uniform. They're they're fake police officers. They don't they don't take an oath to the Constitution. They carry a you know they have a fake badge. They have this fake authority given to them by the federal government and the DHS, Janet uh, Dungbeal Napolitano. And they're going to be going around looking for things to do. They're going to be looking for crimes. This is pre-crime on a whole new level. What's your take on that? Well, yeah, and they're not even talking about um, looking for a situation where they have probable cause that a crime has been committed or particular people or places to be searched. This is direct violation of the Fourth Amendment. This is exactly the kind of fishing expedition and suppression and intimidation that the Fourth Amendment was meant to stop. And the founders had, put, had gone through the warrantless searches of the general, you know, wits of assistance, general warrants, so they can just come in and search whatever they want to. And that's why they wrote the Fourth Amendment. They wanted to stop that kind of stuff, that kind of intimidation and fishing expedition. And yet here we go. We're, we're experiencing the exact same abuse and violation of our rights that compelled our forefathers to take up arms. Yeah, it's the totalitarian order. tiptoe, and it's happening every day, every week. They just notch it up a little bit. So maybe some people don't see it, so they don't care. Some people are affected by it, but they're such a small minority that they can't speak out or they don't speak out, and it just keeps going and going and going. And pretty soon, in 10 years, we're going to look back and go, how the hell did we get here? You know, we're all wearing right. tracker bracelets. Our cars are going to have tracker chips in them. I mean, it's just it's beyond the pale at this point. Yeah, go to the airport. That's, that's what America is going to be eventually, everywhere. Yeah. And, and eventually they'll have sidewalk checkpoints, random checkpoints on the sidewalk. You have to go through a metal detector and get, get patted down and felt up by some guy with blue gloves on. God. That's what they want. The yeah. long-term goal is to make all of America like an airport. Well, some people are fighting back, yourself included. You've got a site called theintolerableacts.org, and you're helping people write NDAA nullification legislation uh, we just pa had a bill passed in Virginia, which is ready to be signed. It's passed the House and Senate. Uh, we had one just pass in our what, – what, how's the one going in uh, Arizona right now? Well, as far as I know, it passed the Arizona um, legislature as well. It's waiting for Jan Brewer, the governor, to sign it. And we're urging her to sign that piece of legislation. Um, I co-authored a model bill along with Richard Fry, a Patriot Coalition, and it's being considered in Oklahoma, North Carolina – and also in Kansas, and I'm flying out to Kansas on Wednesday to testify um, at a hearing on that bill. And, and people can go to the site intolerableacts.org to find information, and you've got, you've got resolutions written for all types of situations. Tell everybody a little bit about that. Absolutely. We've got resolutions there for your county sheriff's sign. You can just go ahead and, and, and pass his own resolution nullifying NDAA and pledging to defend the people of his county against any such attempt to kidnap them. Um, with, with unconstitutional military jurisdiction. And it's also, there's also model resolutions there for counties and state legislatures. Mm. Well, that's good. I'm glad people are fighting back. It's, uh, we get a lot of up updates from the 10th Amendment Center. They seem to be taking a, a, a lead on this as well, in addition to yourself. So people are fighting back, and that is a good sign. I think we're going to beat this stuff. We just got to keep shining light on the roaches and just making them scatter because when they're scattering, they're not coming after us. They're trying to hide, hide their tail and run. Stuart Rhodes of OathKeepers.org. Thank you very much, and we'll be talking to you in the future. Good to go. Thank you. It's a great interview with Stuart. He's a good friend of mine. And uh, check out that site, intolerableacts.org, and 
start talking to your state legislatures. Let's get this thing, this NDAA, these provisions to black bag Americans and take them away without trial, just being accused of a crime. Let's get that stopped and let these people know that they can't just treat us like slaves. And with that, we're going to go to the quote of the day in honor of 420. We got Willie and Nelson. Oh, I think people need to be educated to the fact that marijuana is not a drug. Marijuana is a herb and a flower. God put it here. If he put it here and he wants it to grow, what gives the government the right to say that God is wrong? It's Willie Nelson, quote on marijuana. Happy 420, everybody. It's the end of our week. We had a lot of news. This was a great week. We put together a lot of stuff, and we're going to keep coming and doing it every day of the week as long as we can. Please consider subscribing to us if you're watching this on YouTube. You go to prisonplanet.tv or infowarsnews.com. You can sign up. It's 15 cents a day. We surely do appreciate all the subscribers who are watching, the ones who tell us even when we're on a little bit late, although tonight we're going to be on, on time or we went on time. We really do appreciate all your support. We're going to take this thing to the next level. Thank you for working with us. We're working out the kinks. We're making stuff happen. We're building really cool graphics and hopefully bringing you the information to empower yourselves out there because that's the most important thing. It's not how flashy it looks. It's are we giving you information to help yourself in your life and escape tyranny when you can. With that, I'm Rob Dew. Thank you very much for watching. It's InfoWars Nightly News.